Hi, BookTube. This is Sonia from An Enthusiastic Reader. Welcome back to my channel. It's good to see you all here this morning. This is my Friday Reads video for the week. I haven't been reading too much this week. I've been mostly watching Vlogmas videos. I can't believe how prolific so many people I follow are this month, and it's so much fun. But it does take up a lot of time. I'm afraid to look at my stats on how many videos I'm watching, how much time I'm devoting to watching Vlogmas videos. But rest assured that I've, I'm watching them while I'm doing other things. So it's not a total unproductive activity for me. Maybe next year I will have enough imagination to think about posting videos for 24 days straight. But for now, I'm content to do the Friday Reads, and let's get started. Um, this week I finished Red Clocks by Lenny Zumas, which is a lot more uh, realistic, I guess I'd say, than like something like The Handmaid's Tale. There's nobody wearing cloaks, there aren't people in servitude yet, but Basically, the premise of the book is that it concentrates on four characters in a an Oregon town, a small town, and the consequences of the policies put in, in uh, effect by the legislature. So it even affects international relations in terms of borders and who can cross the border and who can't cross the border and what will happen to women who do try to... Uh, make their own decisions for their own reproductive freedom. So uh, this would be a great book club selection. I thought she, the author did a really good job about showing all the different sides um, of the issue for people. Uh, I also finished a book called His Favorites. His Favorites by Kate Walbert. This was a very short novel about a girl who is 15 and she's in an accident. She actually causes an accident that kills her best friend. And so she's sent away to boarding school and there encounters a predatory teacher. It's not a very long novel. I don't think it was completely successful in showing us this relationship. Things move very quickly. There were a lot of digressions I didn't think the novel actually came together very well. So um, if you liked it, I understand. I'd like to hear in the comments why you did like it, but it just wasn't a novel that's going to stick with me at all. That's it. That's all I've read this week. I have a stack of New Yorker magazines that dates back to probably July that I have not cracked. So I thought maybe I'd sit down and go through a few of those this week. I'm also rereading How to Be Safe by Tom McAllister. And I do have a bunch of mysteries uh, lined up, so I will start something this week. Maybe the first of the Robert Galbraith series or something else, I'm not sure. I'm just taking it easy and taking it a day at a time in December. Um, last Saturday, I got together for coffee with a bunch of women that I used to be in a book club with. We were in a book club for a long time and it finally disbanded due to life circumstances amongst the members. But it was so fun to catch up with them all again and we decided to revive the book club. So next month we'll be reading David Copperfield, which I have already read, but we'll read again for the group and uh, I'm excited to do that. I'm also in two other book clubs, so now you're looking at a person who is involved in three book clubs. That's a big reading commitment, but it is a great way to socialize with other readers in 3D. So I'm just looking forward to seeing what happens in 2019 when I'm juggling these three different commitments. But uh, it was so good to see my old friends again and catch up on all of our lives. So that happened. Uh, this Saturday, I'm going to the Nutcracker with my mom and my grandma. My grandma's 90, and we're going to go downtown and see the show, and that's going to be fun. And Sunday night, I have one of my book club holiday dinners, and on Tuesday, another book club holiday dinner. So a lot of social activities coming up. I don't know what I'll be reading. I wanted to leave you with this 
little recommendation, uh, themillions.com. I'm sure many of you know it. It's a literary website. And at the end of the year, they always do a year in reading essays by authors. And there was one that really struck me by Brian Washington. He was writing about being in Japan at a shrine and looking it up, looking up at all the prayers that people had posted their wishes and they posted them somehow in the shrine. I think he said on little pieces of wood um, and he was sitting there reading them and looking at them. And then he wrote something that really kind of struck, struck me. This year began with the absence of hope and every week that's passed seemed to have added to that refrain, but folks had still taken, had actually bought with currency earned by their labor, these little hunks of wood and then they'd written down their hopes and dreams and wants despite everything, despite the world. That's a little radical when you think about it. That's a lot of beautiful when you think about it. And in a lot of ways, I think the books I read in 2018 elicited a similar emotion. No one asked us to write. There's no assurance that anyone will see what we put down. If your advance is big enough or the publication is halfway decent at social media, or your publicity team is swift enough, or if you're young and white and you catch a wave, then maybe they will, but maybe they won't. And we hang these words up anyway, because we have to, and we hope that someone will see them, although most, most of us will never know if they do. So they'll just carry them around in their heads the same way we will. And that's how we'll build a life together, just tacking up prayers. And that kind of sums up this awful, terrible, wonderful year, doesn't it? See you next time. Bye.